It's always the family. It's not just the man. The punishment is the process and the family is the victim as well. And that's done in, in, intentionally. Leader of the Solidarity Party of Alberta, Arthur Pawlowski is no stranger to the halls of the Ledsbridge Courthouse. He himself was present at the Kutz blockade and spent 50 days in jail for giving a fiery sermon. I asked him his political analysis of the situation that the Kutz four are facing. If I was to summarize what I see right now is, is criminal. It's a criminal behavior and I'm, I'm not talking about the boys in jail. I'm talking about the so-called justice system. I'm talking about the premier. I'm talking about this so-called ruling party that we have right now that has done this to us because we have to remember and we have to keep reminding ourselves that it was the so-called conservative party that did this to us. They locked us like animals. They forced us to put some experimental thing into our system. The rights of Canadians were thrown out. The freedoms were denied just because the government said so. So it's a criminal behavior coming from the totalitarian regime. I, I can't imagine what those families are going through when I was released from 50 days of imprisonment by this government. I remember my wife said, well, you were on the inside, we were on the outside, but we were all in prison with you. And that's exactly what it is. I mean, especially right now with the Gaza craziness, with the war in Ukraine, in the war in the Middle East, um, and we see uh, people yelling and screaming, let's murder Jews, let's mm -hmm. murder people, and the police is not doing absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. The government is not doing anything, and those are actually the real criminals that want other people uh, to be murdered. They're vocal, they're not hiding, they are yelling and screaming in uh, hundreds of uh, towns in our and cities in our uh, beloved Canada, and there is absolutely nothing that is being done uh, to them now it shows clearly that when you oppose government narrative when you're opposing government doing evil you become the enemy of the state when you do stuff that the government really doesn't care much about outside of a little tweet that we stand with israel well then you can get away with literally with murder mm -hmm. um, so the double standards are nothing new. I have been yelling and screaming about this from the very beginning. I am a law-abiding citizen. I stand for the law and order, and I want the equal application of the law. What we see right now is unequal application of the law. It's a selective law, and <laughs> I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. I've seen this growing up behind the Iron Curtain under the boots of the Soviets, and of course I've heard that from my grandparents and the older people that were telling me what the Nazis did. I guess nothing is new under the sun. This is a simple repetition of history. And now the question is what we, the people, are going to do about this. We can keep voting the same monsters, as I call them, uh, back into places of power just because they talk good. Mm -hmm. And just because they don't have horns and, you know, snake eyes, uh, people think, oh, yeah, they must be good people because, you know, listen to them. How wonderful is their speech? Or we can just stop, reflect on what we have learned in the past three and a half years and say, OK, never again I'll vote for the lesser of two evils. I'll vote for someone new. And that's where the idea of the solidarity movement of Alberta came. Now Albertans have a choice. They don't have to take it. They can keep doing the insanity they have been doing in the past 40, 50 years, or they can reflect and say, enough is enough. They've crossed the line. They went after our family members, after our children, and we will replace them with someone that actually cares. I mean, during the past three years, if they did not march with us, if they did not stand up with the common person, with the neighbor, uh, do you really think they're going to stand up when the, the new wave will come or the new wind will show up? We've seen millions of people coming in support of the convoy when it was happening, the convoy to Ottawa. The four Coots men, they were part of this, yet now they seem to be forgotten. They are being allowed to rot in jail in remand center under pre-trial custody for more than 600 days. Did the people forget? Unfortunately, they do. That's just human nature, and I have been bothered with that all my life. Why? why we just don't care enough as humans 
it should be you know when one is done done you know when one is down we all should come and lift that person up uh, in the bible it says that when one body part is hurting we all the whole body is mm -hmm. hurting and it should be like this but unfortunately it's not people have become very selfish self-centered mm -hmm. egoistic me i am myself mm -hmm. and as long as i'm not suffering my children are not suffering then well who cares about them i mean to be fair they were thinking about them for you know five minutes ten minutes and and then life just continues the vacations and work and you know things that people chase after the history however tells us that sooner or later the villains will come after them again mm -hmm. if we allow those four men to rot in prison sooner or later you might find you find yourself mm -hmm. uh, you know in the next cell that just history again i said that thousands of times you don't have to listen or believe Ardo Pulaski, believe my accent. Mm -hmm. uh, we are immigrants, we escaped hell. And when hell arrives or shows up, we can smell it, we can see it right away. And there is only one thing that we can do is yell and scream, be careful. It's not nice, it's not mm -hmm. good. We know how this movie ends and does not end good. It does not end good for the villains and for the victims. Mm -hmm. And that's history. Again, so I don't know, telling you the truth, I don't know what else to do. I mean, I have been yelling, I have been screaming, I have been attending every rally that I physically could. I went in to prison for the Canadians, and yet they have chosen villains again. They have chosen the very people that did this to You're us. referring to the UCP. That's right. I'm talking, and not just the Alberta's uh, conservative, I'm talking about the Ontario Conservative Party, I'm talking about the NDP, I'm talking about the Liberal government, they all are guilty as charged. If I had the power, I would charge them with treason. Mm -hmm. They have betrayed the people, they have done this to people. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I like someone said that the virus didn't do that to us, as people are doing this to people. Mm -hmm. We have to keep remain, reminding ourselves about that. So. What is the solution? Well, there's only one. You must replace the villains. Mm -hmm. As long as the villains are in power, those things will happen and they will happen more often. Mm -hmm. It will not happen less. So today we have the four men. Today we had pastors. Today we had doctors silenced. Today we have Alberta Health Services erasing data. medical data. Mm -hmm. Today you have banks being seized. And yet there is very little outcry. Well, tomorrow will be concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, police officers are going to be shooting people in the head. And some of the people will say, well, that's crazy. That's like, come on, you know, what? give yourself a shake, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's history. It always ends the same way. Evil is like a cancer. And how many times I have said that a cancer needs to be cut out or it will spread and eventually will kill you. So they are there because not enough Albertans do care. Give me enough Albertans and I will give you liberty. Mm -hmm. Give me enough Albertans and I will give you prosperity. Mm -hmm. Dig the oil, get the resources mm -hmm. back running and people will be blessed. Until then, people will have to suffer and I'm telling you, they will suffer. Mm -hmm. You're not giving up on, on your political ambitions. You're going to continue representing your party and putting your voice out there. And uh, when it comes to the Kutz 4, again, people forget. And you ask, why? Why do they forget? Is this, is this a gl like global phenomenon or is it just something to do with the Canadian? Human nature. It's a global human nature. Unfortunately, uh, you know, if they are not hurting they may care for five minutes that some other people are hurting, uh, but then they move on with their own lives. So in order to get people's attention, and this is unfortunate, people need to suffer. And I'm telling you, economy is collapsing. I'm telling you, fiat currency is going to be hurting. I, I think we're about to see a shave in the Canadian and American dollar, 30% to start with, 60% later on, and then they will become worthless, mm -hmm. like literally. Um, 
everything is falling apart. The banking system is falling apart. That's why they needed war. And I said that, <laughs> I said that so many times mm -hmm. during my teachings. They will create a crisis, mm -hmm. this crisis or that crisis, because they need to hide their atrocities. They need to hide the evil they have been doing. And a war is a perfect scenario that the focus of the people will be there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and people will forget. Now everyone is looking at what is happening in the Middle East. Everyone is looking at what's happening in Ukraine. Um, and the four men rotting in prison, well, that's not the priority anymore. Well, it is for me, mm -hmm. because Alberta is my home. Mm -hmm. And this should be a priority for any politician that actually says mm -hmm. and believes that he or she is serving the people. Well, those are his and hers you know, people. Well, the politicians are in it. They have dirty hands, and that's why they're not willing to stick their necks out because, you know, they have things on them. And that just, uh, Schwab is not even hiding it. Mm -hmm. that he owns Canadian politicians. He has them in his packet. So um, they have outlined everything in front of us. I mean, we know what's going on. Now, the, again, the question is, are the Albertans okay with that? Because I'm telling you, they will be next. If the government can get away, if the so-called justice system and the crown prosecutor, that pathological liar, manipulator, evil, wicked man, Stephen Johnston, if he can get away with this, well, uh, he will be able to get away with other things. And you may be on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. You may be the person that is pleading for either your life or the life of your loved ones. And... I guess no one will care then. So, as you know, my platform is very simple. I hate corruption. As you know, they tried to bribe me for eight months, then they tried to blackmail me for four months, and yet I stood strong. And if that's not good enough for the people, well, sorry. There is really nothing else I can give the people except my integrity and my word. And my word is very simple. If I was the leader mm -hmm. of this province, I would do everything in my power to let them on probation. Mm -hmm. Let them wait for the outcome of the trial at home with their loved ones. Don't punish them before even a verdict is rendered. That's what Russia mm -hmm. is doing, and we criticize them for that behavior. That's what North Korea is doing, and we label them a totalitarian regime. That's what Chinese government is doing, and we say that's evil, and yet, our own government is doing this to Canadians as we speak. And if people don't see that, again, sometimes I, I, I find myself repeating over and over again like a broken record, but I don't really know what to say. If people don't see what's really going on after three and a half years of this craziness, then maybe they will never see. Maybe they deserve to be under the boots of communism, socialism, Marxism, fascism hybrid because that's what we're seeing right now. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Maybe they need to suffer and the children need to suffer in order for them to rise up and remember, hey, there was this Art of Alaska guy and he was warning us about this. Oh, hey, they were the four men in prison and that was our cue, that was our time to rise up and stand up. And again, give me enough Albertans and I will give you liberty. Mm -hmm. In the end of the day, we hold the power not the few selected mm -hmm. government officials. We the people, there is four and a half million of us. <laughs> give me a million in Alberta and I will give you back your rights. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, the rights that are supposed to be fundamentally guaranteed mm -hmm. to us, whereas Canada acknowledges the supremacy of God and the rule of law. Well, God is kicked out. The rule of law doesn't exist. It's just what they say and what they're saying to you and me right now by their actions is, we need a scapegoat, we need to send a message to the rest of the people that, hey, we can do with you whatever we want and there is really nothing you can do about it. And I say they're wrong. There is something that we can do about this. Are we willing? Well, last question. You mentioned the crumbling economy, the fiat currency, everything is falling apart. Just like we have a crisis in healthcare, it seems like we have a crisis in um, justice system too. There aren't enough courthouses, there aren't enough judges. Well, uh, we don't have justice system, we just have a system. 
a system that is oppressive, system that hunts down not the real criminals. Because you see, we have enough judges, we have enough crown prosecutors, we have enough police, but they are not they are absolutely not interested in hunting down the real criminals. Mm -hmm. They're hunting uh, people that oppose totalitarian regime. So I call them Gestapo on purpose. And uh, during that time, I was misunderstood. Gestapo means a political police. What we are dealing with is a weaponized system, mm -hmm. systems, I would say, because healthcare system is weaponized, um, mainstream propaganda mm -hmm. is weaponized. You've got the um, so-called justice system, educational system, you name it, whatever we, banking system, it's all being weaponized mm -hmm. by a, a totalitarian regime that wants to subdue the people in order to forward their agenda. And they have multiple agendas, Agenda 30 and Agenda 40, 50 now. I mean, they have more agendas than the Soviets had when I was growing up. So... Um, they weaponized all of that. And, and again, process is the punishment. Even if those men will be vindicated, if they will walk out, they will be damaged for the rest of their lives unless Jesus heals them. And that's exactly the message. The message from those villains in government is, you mess with us, we will mess with you and your loved ones. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it. Today, I was um, actually looking into um, the job, you know, the jobs that you know being forcefully injected into the population and there is zero accountability mm -hmm. the government has given them a total immunity mm -hmm. no matter what happens to you there are no consequences mm -hmm. you're effectively you have become by the orders of your own government guinea pigs mm -hmm. and they're getting away with that while well, elect artabalaski into office and i'm telling you we will be revisiting what was done to us and the people guilty of crimes against humanity will be brought to justice. And I'm talking about judges. I'm talking about chief of police. I'm talking about politicians that did this to us or the chief health care officers, whatever you want to call them. They must be accountable. I'll tell you why it's important, the Nuremberg trial number two, because if we don't do it, and, and I'm not talking about vengeance, I'm talking about justice. Justice demands restitution. If you don't do it a year, two, five, ten years from now, some other people will come with different names and different faces, maybe different party colors, and they will try to do the same thing. We must send a message that we are watching, we the people, we are watching and we are not happy with what was done to us and our loved ones and those that uh, will be found guilty of those atrocities will be punished without punishment you cannot move on mm -hmm. i mean i hear this rhetoric like we gotta move on we gotta move on well the problem is that they the villains are not moving on let me ask you have you moved on from having spending 50 days in jail well how can you this was a a, a criminal act by the government. You cannot just move on. You have to go after the villains. That's why we hired the lawyers to sue the government. We're going after the government full force. I You're mean, suing the government? That's right. I hired um, I hired a whole law firm, mm -hmm. actually, right now. Mm -hmm. And we are gathering evidence. We're going after the villains, and we will sue until Jesus comes back, or until order will be restored, and the people will finally decide to vote good people for a change not evil monsters that have been raping and pillaging us for years. But that's up to the people. I mean, I can't twist people's arms. I can say, well, I'm a good person. And the person that raped you is a, you know, it's an evil one. If you think that being raped is a good thing, that is sorry, but there's nothing mm -hmm. I can do about it. Right? I mean, th but that's what it comes to. Mm -hmm. A realization, what was done is wrong and it's evil and should never happen. And people have to make a choice. They have to decide. Basically, you're saying today, if you're silent on the Kutz 4, you will be next, ultimately, and no one will come to your aid. Yeah, the famous saying, right? They came, they came for the unionists, and I was not one, so mm -hmm. I didn't care, right? The famous saying, um, they came for the Jews. I was not a Jew, and so... People have the tendency of looking at the situation. Well, this 
is not bothering me. And mm -hmm. I say, this is not bothering you yet. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you will be next. But there will be no one else uh, to stand up and fight for you. That's a situation that happened to me. That's a situation that is happening with the four men that are imprisoned by this totalitarian regime. And then one day you might be the next victim who is going to stand up for you. I'm so grateful that you're standing up for them and there's some other good people that are standing up. But where are the politicians? Mm -hmm. I thought that they are supposed to be serving all, mm -hmm. the good, the bad and the ugly. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just bringing, I'm just doing the news. I'm just bringing what's happening today. For example, I was the only court accredited uh, media there. Nobody else showed up, no mainstream media at all. All the family members are there. Why wouldn't they come and speak to them? I don't know. But, but, I'll, tell you, but yeah. I'll tell you why. Because they have what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They have those men imprisoned. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Yeah, they, there is no need for them to come. They've achieved their objective. Mm -hmm. The government is happy. The so-called justice system is happy. The Crown prosecutor, that pathological, evil, wicked liar, Stephen Johnston, he is happy. And the mainstream media that was paid to do this to us, they're happy. Why would they bother even to cover this? If they would care to cover this, they might get some sympathy mm -hmm. from the people, and they don't want that. Yeah. Totalitarian regime doesn't want sympathy for the victims. They always want to portray themselves as we are right, everybody else is wrong. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us a political analysis.